In order to beat Donald Trump, we're going to need the largest voter turnout in the history of the United States. Democrats take a huge risk if we just substitute one arrogant billionaire for another. In terms who can beat Donald Trump, NBC did a poll yesterday. It says Joe Biden is best equipped to beat Donald Trump. I can't think of a ways that would make it easier for Donald Trump to get reelected than listening to this conversation. I think the path is a high voter turnout. I'm the one on this stage that had the highest voter turnout of any state in the country. If you look at the choice between a revolution or the status quo, and you don't see where you fit in that picture, then join us. Good morning, everybody. Happy Thursday. We have an amazing, amazing post-debate show for everybody today. That's right. We've got we a special debate coverage show. We've got Ryan Grimm here to talk about what went down. We've also got Brianna Joy Gray from Team Sanders to talk about how she felt her guy did. And we've got a super panel, super panel. to break it all down Some of your for favorites. us. But I think probably the headline from the night had to be Bloomberg's complete implosion. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is as close to cable news as you'll find us uh, today, but oh my God. Yeah, even they agreed with that. Yeah, one. every, like, I check that's every. That's history making in and of itself. I check every Chiron whenever I walk <laughs> in in the morning and every single one said Bloomberg thrashed, Bloomberg destroyed. And these are by, by the way, even on Morning Joe, where they employ a guy who manages Bloomberg's, Bloomberg's money. money. <laughs> so that's pretty bad. Real, very, very bad moment. I mean, what really just flayed the skin off of his bones was that Elizabeth Warren moment last night on the non-disclosures agree, non-disclosure agreements. Let's let's take a listen to that. Senator Warren, you've been critical of Mayor Bloomberg on this issue. Yes, I have, and I hope you heard what his defense was. I've been nice to some women. <laughs> has to stand on his record. And what we need to know is exactly what's lurking out there. He has gotten some number of women, dozens, who knows, to sign non-disclosure agreements, both for sexual harassment and for gender discrimination in the workplace. So, Mr. Mayor, are you willing to release all of those women from those non-disclosure agreements so we can hear their side of the story? We have a very few non-disclosure agreements. How, how many is Let me that? finish. How many is that? None of them accuse me of doing anything other than maybe they didn't like the joke I told. And let me just put, and let me put, there's a be, agreements between two parties that wanted to keep it quiet, and that's up to them. They signed those agreements, so, and we'll live with it. So wait, when you say it is up to, I just want to be clear. Some is how many? And, and, when you, and when you say they signed them and they wanted them, if they wish now to speak out and tell their side of the story about what it is they allege, that's now okay with you? You're releasing them on television tonight? Se Senator, no. Is that right? Senator, tonight? Senator, the company and somebody else, in this case, you know, a man or a woman, or could be more than that, they decided when they made an agreement that they wanted to keep it quiet for everybody's no. interest. They signed the agreements, and that's what we're going to live I, with. I'm sorry. No, the question is, are I the women bound by being muzzled by you? And you could release them from that immediately. Because understand, this is not just a question of the mayor's character. This is also a question about electability. We are not going to beat Donald Trump with a man who has who knows how many non-disclosure agreements and the drip, drip, drip of stories of women saying they have been harassed okay. and discriminated against. That's not what we do as Democrats. Mr. Wow. She <laughs> gutted him like a fish. Yeah. And here's the thing. Yeah. You ain't See, in Davos anymore, are you, Mike? Well, and that's the thing <laughs> is, this guy's used to being king. Yeah. He's used to being the billionaire with everybody kissing his butt, never having to get challenged, never having to answer for anything, and he was completely unprepared. I mean, this was by far the worst moment, but there were many other really bad moments. Even if that never happened, it still would have been a complete yeah, he disaster Yeah, he didn't have an answer on stop and frisk, didn't have an answer on 
Trump backing Republican candidates in the past. Didn't you, even the opening, to, we're going to cover it later. I mean, Bernie hit him right out of the gate on Bloomberg uh, for some of his past donations on the billionaire status and all that. He just seems so fundamentally out of touch with the Democratic Party today. What is really funny is Ryan Grimm and I, over the scene yesterday's show, where there's literally a video of Bloomberg talking about how he couldn't run because he would have to go on an apology tour for all of the things <laughs> that he legitimately believes. And that's what you saw yesterday. I yeah. mean, didn't have, he, oh, I'm embarrassed by stop and frisk. That's not true. You, I mean, he, that's, it's completely contra to the public yeah. record at the time. Yeah. Obamacare, I mean, you know, the NDAs with women. There's a lot of stuff he out there. He tried to say he didn't like Obamacare because it didn't go far enough, which is right. just it's like a true. complete it's not true. lie. Right. He called it a disgrace. Yeah. Biden was right on this. He called it a disgrace at the time and whined about how it's always going to cost so much money and it doesn't tackle any of the systemic problems, which, I mean, that second part is actually correct. But the idea that he thought it didn't go far enough is just so farcical. And and what's the real problem here? It's not even any of these individual issues. Mm -hmm. It's that he has built his whole campaign with support that I would wager is pretty soft at this point on the idea that he is the electability candidate. If you were with Biden and you're now disappointed in him and you don't think he can get it done, come over to me. I am the strong horse to back. I can beat Donald Trump. You look at that guy, that guy's going to get destroyed by Donald Trump. Right. Are you kidding me? There's going to be, and this is a very interesting test case, because we have been trying to figure out where Bloomberg support is earned media, positive earned media, right. which has been getting or is it the $500 million in ads that he spent? Right. We're going to find out in the next couple of days because what's going to happen is, like I said, all three Chirons on the cable news, everybody's starting to turn against him now, or at least they're going to replay some very bad moments for him. If it is the earned media, his support is going to drop like a rock. And But if it's the targeted ads then I'm afraid I have a bad answer, which is we live in a in a country where not that many people watched that debate last night. How many do you think? A couple million at max, right? That would be fantastic ratings. He could probably hit, you know, 100 million eyeballs over the next couple of months, and that can wash it yeah, out. Yeah, I think, listen, I think it is going to have an impact. I don't think his it support is going to crater yeah. to zero. No. Because what we've seen consistently is that the sort of working class tends to be more stable in their support mm -hmm. than college-educated voters. Right now, based on the crosstabs that we've seen, and it's relatively early, he's been getting a mix of support. He's got some working class right. support. He's got some more college-educated support. That's the group that I expect him to really take a hit with because they're so influenced by that media narrative. Right. And so the fact that he's been getting all this positive coverage of like, oh, look at him with all his money and all his ad buys and all his team and all of that, that is going to shift for them. And there were a lot of like basically white college educated liberals who were flirting with the idea. They were like Bloomberg curious, flirting with the idea mm -hmm. of going to Bloomberg. That now is going to be completely over yeah, for he him. He never should have gone to the debate. It really was a disaster. It he shouldn't sure have. That's hasn't debated right. in 11 years. He could have ruled the airwaves and he could have been the billionaire on the state. And instead he went there to get, I mean, he spent $500 million to get flayed live well, on and live he could television. Have, he could have said, look, I want to follow the same rules right. as all the other candidates. Right. I didn't make the debate stage based on the criteria that was laid out for everyone else. I want to play this fair and square, so I'm going to stay away. But again, he's so arrogant. And that was the other problem for him. Like, put all the, you know, the inability to respond aside, the lack of any sort of vision for why he actually mm -hmm. wants to be part. Like, put all of that aside. He just comes off as, like, a jerk. Yeah, like, you don't like the guy, no, you know? And that's not. one thing. Maybe that works if he exudes this competence and he's tough and he's strong and he's smart right. and all those things, maybe you go, okay, well, I don't love him, but those other qualities make up for it. But you can't be like, you know, inarticulate and wrong on the issues and you're a jerk. Right. That mix just doesn't work for people. Yeah, it all, it was just a total, it was a disaster for him. It, it was really was. I, yeah. He handled himself much worse than I thought he would. But Apparently he had some bad debates when he was mayor of New York. Again, we shouldn't count him out entirely. I mean, he's got a lot of money. The main thing, I want everybody to pay attention to this, which is that Bloomberg has said he won't run, he won't spend a lot of money on negative ads against his opponents. That he'll primarily focus his fire on beating Donald Trump and on positive ads for himself. I think that could change after last night. After the amount of fire that he took, he could significantly change how the amount of ad spend that he has towards negative ads against Sanders, Warren, and others. 
that would significantly change the dynamic of the race because even though it wouldn't it wouldn't necessarily help Bloomberg, that could dep- that could just throw a wrench into the entire media market. Well, and process. it could be the thing that keeps Bernie from getting an outright majority exactly. of the delegates because right. I mean, look, anyone's going to take a hit if you run hundreds of millions of dollars in negative anyone. ads against yeah. them. Anyone is going to take a hit. So I think you're absolutely right, right about that. If he goes that path of basically scorched earth against Bernie in particular, who is the main threat at this point, um, yeah, that could block Bernie from be- getting getting the nomination outright, which has always been Bloomberg's play. Yes. That's always been what he's thought. If, if he could get a lot of delegates, even if he couldn't get the most delegates, he could go into the convention, pick a Stacey Abrams or some other consensus type VP pick and ultimately come away with the nomination. Yeah. All right. All right. We're going to have more for you right after this.